This is Teacher Edward. Welcome in our today's class. I want us to go through our second topic in our science syllabus. Our second topic is always health education. So that is what I want us to look at, a subtopic known as the meaning of HIV and AIDS. So this is our subtopic, meaning of HIV and AIDS. So in this topic, we'll be talking about diseases. Yes, and you all know that diseases are caused by microorganisms like bacteria, yes, the fungi, viruses, and many other microorganisms. So this is a topic that will help us to know some of the diseases that you're supposed to be aware of. Yes, and I think in future, corona will also be included in this particular topic. It is a new disease, yes, and a disease that you're supposed to be aware of. I know that you have been enlightened by the televisions and radios about it, and you're taking good care of yourselves by following the guidelines that we have been given by the Ministry of Health. Something like good social distance, so avoid close contact. Yes, stay at home. Something else, good, we have been asked to wash our hands often using soap and running water. Yes, that will help to kill the bacteria and the germs of the COVID disease or virus. Good, another one. So you can carry sanitizer like mine here. I always work with mine. I have others. I have others that can even fit in my pocket. So after a certain period of time, I just sanitize my hands. Good, I sanitize my hands. Yes, you can sanitize your hands. Is something else? Yes, you can use a mask. Every time you're walking out of your house, make sure you come out with a mask. A mask can help you to prevent yourself from getting this particular disease. So those are some things that you have been told by the radios, yes, by the Ministry of Health through the televisions and radios. And if you observe them, you'll be free from that particular disease. Yes, corona is out here and it is very dangerous. So let us protect ourselves. So I think in future, this particular disease will be included in our syllabus and it will fall in this particular topic, health education. Yes, and maybe we'll be learning about it in school. So, but for today, our subtopic is the meaning of HIV and AIDS. AIDS is another very dangerous disease a very dangerous disease that can easily cause death. So it's very good for us to know the meaning of that. So be attentive. I know that you are good peoples. At the end of this, you're supposed to give me some answers to the questions that I ask. So I want us to look at the meaning of the two words. I have two initials here. We have the HIV and we have another one known as AIDS. So I want us to look at the meaning of those two things. So and we will start with the meaning of HIV. Meaning of HIV. Meaning of HIV. So it's very good to know what the initials mean or represent. And then from there, we'll get the meaning of that. So when you look at the the first letter here, it is H. Yes, the first letter here is H. So H stands for, yes, for those who are in class five are supposed to be knowing what it stands for. Good. It stands for human. It stands for human. So this means that HIV AIDS affects human beings only. This is a disease that is meant for human beings only. So it's only for human, not for any other thing, not for any other living organism, but for human beings. So you cannot say that a certain dog died because of AIDS. 
No, it is only for human beings. So that is what H stands for, human, meaning that the disease is only meant for human beings. I, I stands for, and this is supposed to be one word, I stands for immunodeficiency. These are two words that have been joined to come up with one, immunodeficiency. Immuno comes from the word immune. Deficiency remains to be deficiency. Immune, it's the ability of the body to protect itself against diseases. When your body is healthy, when your body is able to protect itself against diseases, we refer to that as immunity. We say that you are immune. Deficiency means lack of. When you are lacking something, we say that you have a deficit of something. If you are lacking, for example, you are looking for some money to buy something like 10 shillings and you don't have, you can say that you have a deficit of 10 shillings. That means that you are lacking something. So when you join the two words, immunodeficiency, it means that you are lacking immunity. In other words, your body cannot be able to protect itself against diseases. Your immune system is weak. Your defense system cannot be able to protect your body against diseases. So that is the meaning of the word immunodeficiency. Lack of that ability to fight against diseases. So that is the meaning of that. So I represents immunodeficiency. V stands for virus. So it means that AIDS is caused by a microorganism known as virus. And that virus is called HIV. The virus that causes AIDS is known as HIV. Yes. So HIV is a virus. It's a microorganism that causes AIDS. So you have said that diseases are caused by different microorganisms. And a good example of a microorganism is this virus known as HIV. So HIV is a virus that causes AIDS. So after looking at the meaning of HIV, I want us to look at the meaning of AIDS. But before that, a recap. So we have said that H stands for human. This means that the disease is only meant for human beings. It only attacks human beings. Then we have I. I stands for immunodeficiency. And this is when you are writing, make sure it is one word. There is no space here. And we have said that immuno comes from the word immune. Deficiency remains to be deficiency. Deficiency means lack of. Immune means that you are able or your body is able to fight against diseases. So when you join the two words, it means that your body is not in a position to fight against diseases. Your body is not in a position to protect itself from getting the microorganisms that cause diseases. That is what we refer to Im immunodeficiency. Then from there, V, we have said, means virus. And we have said that virus is uh, one of the microorganisms that causes diseases. And that means that AIDS is caused by a virus known as HIV. So from there, let's look at the meaning of AIDS. So by the end of this, I want you to be in a position to tell us the meaning of AIDS and these initials. So the first initial that we have is A. A stands for good. So we have acquired. So acquired, it means to, to acquire is to get. When you're talking about acquire. So I have acquired something. It means to get. When you get something, you can say that I have acquired this thing. Maybe it is a shamba. So I've acquired this shamba. So to acquire is to get. When you see us talking about AIDS, acquired means to get infected. 
it means to get infected. Yes, and you get infected from another infected person. Good. So acquired means to get infected. And we get infected from another infected person. In other books, we say that acquired means got from. So it is just the same, got from, or to get, to get infected. So acquired means get infected. So we have I. I, I stands for good. So when it comes to AIDS, it is different from HIV. For HIV, we have said I stands for immunodeficiency, one word. Here, I stands just for the word immune, just immune. Don't add other details. I stands for the word immune. But for HIV, I stands for the word immunodeficiency, immunodeficiency. So immune, I have told you that immune means, yes, ability to fight against diseases. So when you are immune, we say that your body is able to fight against diseases. So that is the meaning of the word immune. Then from there we have D, letter D. Letter D stands for the word deficiency. And we have said that deficiency means lack of. Rack of. So when you see the word deficiency, it means rack of. So then the other one we have letter S stands for the word syndrome. So syndrome, these are signs and symptoms. Whenever you are sick, whenever you fall sick, we normally note that you are sick because of seeing some signs and some symptoms. So those signs and symptoms here are represented by the word syndrome. So it means that a person who is suffering from AIDS will show some signs and symptoms. So as we continue, we will highlight some of these signs and symptoms that are seen when a person is suffering from HIV and AIDS. So that is what AIDS means. So it means acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So kindly remind yourselves the meaning of these initials. Acquired, we have said, is to get infected. I stands for immune, which means ability to fight against diseases. D stands for deficiency, which means lack of. S stands for syndrome. So here the two words relate. When you are suffering from HIV and AIDS, so there will be that lack of the ability to fight against disease. So that is why the two words are very important. Then after that, after a period of time, there will be some signs and symptoms of HIV and AIDS. So AIDS is a very dangerous disease. It has no cure. So you're supposed to be very keen to protect yourself against that disease. But those who have it, they know that that does not mean that they are just about to die. There are some people who live many years with this particular disease after taking the measures that they are given by the doctors. It is always good to take the doctor's advice keenly because it can help us very much. But for those who don't have it, it is good to avoid getting it. We normally say that prevention is better than cure. So that means that we look at some of the ways that the disease is spread so that we can easily avoid getting that particular disease. We have looked at the meaning of HIV and the meaning of AIDS. And from that, you're supposed to know that this particular disease attacks your defense system. So it attacks it and destroys the immune system completely. So that is why we say that the disease is very dangerous. And for your information, the disease does not kill you. 
after destroying your immune system, other diseases will take that opportunity and they can easily kill a person. So that is why we have said it is good to take care of ourselves. Remember, this disease has no cure. Ungojwa hauna tiba. Na what nasema kwa kiswahili, ukimwi ni ukosefu wa kinga muirini. So if you don't have that immunity of your body, it is very dangerous because other diseases can easily kill you. So it is good to take good care of yourself. So we have said that this disease is transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person through body fluids. So that means that the virus or the HIV virus can be found in some body fluids. Yes, and I want us to name some of those body fluids. Yes, but before I give you the names, I know you can reason out and brainstorm some of those body fluids. Yes, tell your friend, tell whoever is near you. There's examples of those body fluids that carry the HIV virus. Yes, good. So we have a body fluid like blood. Yes, blood. Yes, blood is one of the body fluids that carry the virus, the HIV virus. Yes, that is why we always ask you to avoid coming into contact with somebody's blood. Good. Another one? Yes, we have saliva. Yes, we have saliva. Although the virus in saliva is found in small amount, the saliva is another body fluid that carries the virus. That is where we discourage things like deep kissing. Yes, avoid such things. Yes, bad manners. Avoid deep kissing. Yes, apart from that, the virus or the HIV virus is also found in breast milk. Yes, breast milk. If a mother is infected, the virus will be present in her breast milk. That's why mothers with young babies or pregnant women are advised to go for health clinics. Yes, from there they are advised on what to do with their young ones or with their Yes, they are advised on what to do with their young ones. So it is good to know that breast milk also carries the virus. We have other body fluids. They are known as reproductive fluids. Yes, for those who are in class 6 and above, you know what reproductive fluids are. Yes, these are fluids like semen. This is from male. And also we have the vaginal fluids from the females. Yes, if I was the minister or the cabinet secretary of health, I would have said semen from males and vaginal fluids from females. Yes. Those are some of the body fluids that carry the HIV virus. I have said that we have blood, that is number one. We have saliva, it's another one. We also have breast milk, and then we have the reproductive fluids like semen from males and vaginal fluids from females. So after looking at the body fluids that carry the HIV virus, I want us to look at several ways in which the HIV virus is spread. This virus can be easily passed from an infected person to a healthy person. So I wanted us to look at those ways. How can it be passed from that person who is infected to a healthy person? And I want your help. I know there are many ways, but I just mentioned a few. I just mentioned a few ways. So one way in which the virus can be passed from or spread from an infected person to a healthy person is through sexual intercourse. Yes, when having sexual intercourse with an infected person, a healthy person will get the virus. So it will be passed from that infected person to the other one. So the best thing that you do 
avoid sexual intercourse, abstain from sex. Abstain from sex. Eh, wacha tabia mbaya. So the other one, way number two, is through breast milk. An infected mother can easily transmit the virus to a healthy child. And that's why I emphasize the need of those mothers to go for medical checkup. Then from there, the doctors knows what they do. They advise them accordingly. So it's good to go for those checkups to avoid spreading the disease to a healthy child. So another one, is through exchange of saliva, through exchange of saliva, and this mostly occurs when deep kissing. That's why I said avoid deep kissing, avoid deep kissing. This virus, we have said that can be found in saliva. Yes, even if we have said that it's found in small amount, but it is good to avoid such behaviors like deep kissing. So another way in which the virus can be spread is through blood transfusion. Through blood transfusion. Yes, sometimes we come across accidents. Sometimes we fall sick and you find yourself that you don't have enough blood in your body. And blood is very important. You cannot survive without blood. And because of that, some we get blood from other people. Those people, we call them blood donors. Yes, we call them blood donors. We have a day, that is 14 June, every year. That, that is a day that has been set aside for people to donate blood. Those people who donate blood are known as blood donors. They are known as blood donors. They are very important. Because in our hospitals, we have a lot of people who need blood. Yes. And that process of giving out that blood and putting it inside the bodies of somebody's body is what we call blood transfusion. And in case there is a person, an infected person who has donated blood, and we have said that the virus is carried by blood, that person or the healthy person, or the sick person who, is, who will be receiving, or the recipient will also get the virus. So the virus can be easily spread through blood transmission. But before donation, or before blood donation, the doctors carry out a lot of tests yes, to ensure that the blood being given out is safe. But I have said that that is another way in which the virus can be spread or transmitted. And I have told you that blood donation is done mostly on 14 June every year. That is the day that has been set aside for donating blood. It's a good thing, you can go and give out blood. Mostly this one is done by a person who is above 18 years. So when you hit that age, Ensure that you'd be generous enough to give out your blood to the needy people. Sharing is caring, isn't it? But before you share, ensure that the, your blood is well tested. Good. Another way in which the HIV virus can be spread is through the contact with open wounds. Contact with open wounds. That's why it is good in case you have an open wound, or in case you are injured, ensure that you cover your wounds. You can use something like the rasp up thrust. Yes, the rasp up thrust is very common. It can help to cover those open wounds. The moment you come into contact with somebody's open wound, that can help transmit the virus from that infected person to you or to a healthy person. So open wounds are supposed to be covered. Another one, which is very common in our homes, is that habit of sharing skin piercing and cutting tools. Yes, these are very common habit in our homes, in our neighborhoods, but it's not a good practice. It's supposed to be avoided and discouraged because it can easily help to transmit the virus. 
So when you are sharing the piercing, the skin piercing and cutting tools, it is very dangerous. Yes, in your midst, there might be one person who has the virus in the body, and that means that the virus can be easily transmitted from that infected person to you, yes, or to the other healthy neighbors. Yes, so avoid that behavior. Don't share skin piercing and cutting tools. Those are just but a few ways in which the virus spread. But the main method or the main way in which the virus is spread, in case you ask, it is through sexual, yes, through sexual intercourse. So make sure you remind yourself those ways. We have said that we have sexual intercourse, we have through breast milk, we have exchange of saliva during deep kissing, we have through blood transfusion, we also have contact with open wounds. And then the last one that I have given out is sharing skin, cutting and piercing tools. Sharing skin, piercing and cutting tools. So avoid all those things and many others. I know there are many other methods. After writing down these methods, make sure you add others. Add a few, add three or four other ways in which the virus can be spread. So look at these ways again. Yes, these are the ways in which the virus can be spread. Let's go through them. Yes, keep on reminding yourself and your friends so that they are safe, so that you ensure that they are also safe. Good. Copy, copy, write down. After looking at ways in which the HIV virus can be spread, I want us to look at ways in which the virus cannot be spread. Out there, we have a lot of myths. There's a lot of lies, a lot of things that people say which are not true about HIV AIDS. Yes, I have written for you a few, but there are many others. These are just but several to guide you. So will this will guide you to come up with other ways in which the virus cannot be spread. So number one, this virus cannot be spread by playing with infected people. So when you go out there to play football and other games with infected people, that cannot cause the spread of the virus. So it cannot be transmitted or spread by playing with infected people. So it's good to play with them and to show them love. Yes. Another one is sharing toilets and bathrooms with infected people. Yes, when we share those facilities or those things, does not mean that the virus can be easily passed from those infected to those that are healthy. That is another myth. So you see some people saying that they cannot use the same bathroom or the same toilet with people who are infected with the virus. The virus cannot be spread by sharing toilets and bathrooms with infected people. Then we have another very common myth where people say that if a mosquito bites an infected person and then the same mosquito bites a healthy person that the HIV virus will be transmitted. That is not the case. The only disease that is transmitted through a mosquito bite is malaria. Others, no, especially AIDS. So mosquitoes and other insects bites do not spread, do not cause the transmission of the HIV AIDS. Another one, shaking hands and hugging infected people. Greeting those people cannot cause the spread of the virus. Those are just but some myths. Yes, others say that they cannot share same seats or chairs with infected people. That is not true. The virus cannot be spread by sharing those seats. Others don't 
or I don't like living with those people who are infected. Living with them cannot cause the spread or the transmission of the virus. So there are many other means out there. You can add a few. Yes, just go through my list again. Yes, and then from there add yours. Yes, those are just but some of the ways in which the virus cannot be spread or transmitted. Write them down. So that will be the end of our today's class. I wish you all the best. Make sure that you continue taking good care of yourselves to avoid the corona disease and other diseases that we'll be talking about. Otherwise, for today, I wish you all the best. Goodbye.